And so, you know, it's a lot of times Christmas gets a, a rap, kind of a bad rap because of bad rap. Get it? Rap up. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> boo, yeah, no. but uh, it, you know, because people just see it as very materialistic, and and it can be very materialistic if if you just celebrate Christmas the way the world celebrates Christmas. And that's not what God's desire is. He wants us to be givers. And He definitely wants us to be also receivers. You know, that's how we got born again. We had to receive Jesus, right? And so, you know, um, we're, I'm going to be talking about the aroma of Christmas today. The aroma of Christmas. We've talked about the Christmas story and praise God. Um, we've read uh, the book of Luke where it talks about Jesus was, you know, born in a manger and uh, there was no room for him in the inn. And um, it, it's just an awesome thing. See, we need to make room for Jesus. Amen. The world is trying to take the nativities and take all those things out. But, you know, the, the world's saying, we don't have any room for you, Jesus. But we, as believers, we make room for the king. Amen. And so, we're going to be talking about the aroma of Christmas. And the aroma of Christmas is the spirit of giving. It's, it's not a selfish kind of spirit. But, you know, in, in the world, Christmas is very materialistic and very selfish. It's, it's about what, what, what am I going to get, you know? Um, you know, who's going to give me, you know, the, is, is Tommy getting more toys than Susie? Or, you know... Forgive me if there's a, a Susie that's missing out here, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just really, um, you know, the world has turned it into, uh, you know, a way to m make all their money for the whole year. That's why they call it, you know, Black Friday, because they're in the red, and, and during the Christmas season, that's how they get out of the red, they get into the black, you know? and uh, a lot could be said about that. Uh, Norman and I, like I said before, we went shopping one time on a, uh, was it was it a black? Black Friday. Friday. Doing it again. Uh, we'll never do that again. <laughs> we we almost got ran over a few times, but <laughs> you know it because it's just the way the world thinks, and we don't think like the world, right? Amen. See, see, giving is an expression of love that flows from the very heart of God. God is a giver. And Christ's birth was the greatest gift that he, that he ever gave to humanity. It's, it's the, the gift of God. Without that gift, there was no life. And so Jesus, the, when, when he was um, born in a manger, he was God's present. And he was all wrapped up. Amen? And we need to, to be willing to unwrap him this time of the year. Unwrap him to our friends. Unwrap him to those who are, have need. We need to give Jesus as that gift. In James 1, verse 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation nor shadow of turning. That's, that's what God does. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Praise God. And, and He doesn't change His mind about it. There's no variation nor shadow of turning. God is a giver. If we could get that revelation. See, a lot of people see God as a withholder. But God has never revealed Himself as a, as a withholder. He always ha has His arms open. He's a giver. And if we could get a revelation of that, it would, it would help our faith. It would help, us to, it would help our prayers. Because we, we would be like, you know what? God, we wouldn't be begging Him for things. We'd be saying, God, I just thank You because You are such a good God. You give good gifts. I mean, all good things come down. All good gifts come down from the Father of lights where there's no variation nor shadow of turning. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. I know that. It's, I've experienced it in my, own, in my own life. When giving to people, there's, there's just something that you receive back. It's just... It blesses you to be a giver. Now, there are some families where, you know, where there's issues in the family. And, and I've done marriage counseling in the past where the, the father says, 
but but I give them this and I give them that and I give them the other thing. But but you know, it's not just giving that that is love. Uh, giving is an expression of love. But you can give without having the, the right motives. You can give without having that love in your hearts. And and so, you know, it's very empty when, when a father says, you know, um, you know, but I give them, I provide this, I provide that, I give them this, I do this. But if they aren't showing love to their, their children, then it's all in vain. It really doesn't matter. It's empty. And so, so love is the aroma of giving. Love is the aroma of Christmas. And Christmas is the greatest gift of God. It's, it's what God did. You know, we can learn a lot from... It's, Anyone see any secular Christmas stories this year at all? I mean, no one's seen or ever seen Santa Claus. I mean, even the world understands Christmas is about giving. You know, now Santa Claus, we all know. Hold your ears, children. But um, we all know that that it's it's just you know uh, it's it's a made up story. But the concept is giving. It's, that's the world, they, they, they got the concept of giving, but, but they, they leave Jesus out of it. Amen. They forget that the greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind is the gift of Jesus. So, we, we, uh, anyone ever see the other one? There's some other ones. Uh, the Grinch that stole Christmas. Anyone ever see that? Yeah. There's this, you know, green creature, the Grinch. And he was offended. He was hurt, right? And and, and he was he, he was so offended. His heart just grew cold. See, Jesus Jesus used little parables to tell stories to to illustrate uh, biblical truths. We can learn a few things from some of the some of the Christmas stories that the secular world has actually uh, come up with. And so, what did he do? He he was so. Um, Green. I guess he was green with envy. I don't know, but uh, he he uh, he just stole everyone's gifts. He he was a taker. That's what he was. He was a taker. There are people out there that are takers, and you know the, the thing is, is Jesus said it's better to give than it is to receive. And so there was a a, a, a I guess a little girl or whatever that little creature was from the, the land that they lived in. And, and she showed the Grinch love. And love is what melted his cold heart. And then he became, he, it changed him. And it made him a giver. It made him different. And that's what the love of God does. The love of God will change us. It will transform us. The Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So we can see the world, even, even the secular world, understands a little bit about what Christmas is, at least the, the giving aspect. And, uh, you know, the Christmas Carol, anyone ever remember that one? Anyone ever play in that one, the Christmas Carol? And, and you know, that's with the Scrooge. Okay, so everybody, you've heard of the Scrooge? Yes. And uh, he was a selfish uh, man. He, he just uh, counted all his coins, and he, he didn't share. He, he was not a giver. It was not his heart or his attitude. He was a withholder. And he, through the story, he discovered that people were suffering and people were hurting because of his selfishness. And, and he got a second chance to make a difference in people's lives. Did you know that your giving can make a difference in people's lives? Your giving can help people. Your giving can actually transform their lives. And I'm not just talking about materialistic giving. I'm talking about giving love. Being there for someone. You know, there's more ways to give than just financially. We need to be, as Christians, we need to be known as givers. Because as we give of ourselves, of our lives, of our time, of, of, of our, our heart, just, sometimes it's just being there for someone when they're hurting. You're giving. And as we do that, it can actually change someone's life. We, we need to be known as givers in this church. We give. We give of our lives to people. We see someone hurting and we reach out to them. 
And so, so we can see with the Christmas Carol, you know, the Scrooge actually changed. He became a giver. And this one is probably my favorite one. I'm not going to go through a, a whole sermon of Christmas story, secular Christmas stories, but uh, it's a wonderful life. We, anyone here ever see that one? It's pretty, pretty famous, huh? It's a good one. And, uh, you know, we, we know that there was a guy named George Bailey, and he was a, he was a giver. And he, he, was a, he was a young banker, and he, he helped people finance houses where they couldn't have gotten loans any other way, but he would help them. He would help them with uh, their situations and what they were going through. And so he, he really, um, you know, he, he was known in the community as a giver. And then we, we, we know the story. Uh, I'm going to be a spoiler here. If, if you haven't seen it, you still need to see it. Um, where, where he lost money, and it looked like he stole the money. And the police were coming to get him, and he, he, he lost his bank. He lost everything. And because of his giving, all the people knew that he was honest, that he was telling the truth. And all the people that he helped over all those years, they came together and they said, here, I'll, I'll help. I'll, I'll give you money. I'll, I'll sow here. I'll sow there. And, and so he, he gave, but his giving actually came back to him. His giving, when he needed the most, when it seemed like he was down and out, the, the finances came in. People's hearts, he, he, his life affected many, many people. Amen? And, you know, but we know that Jesus, who is the greatest gift of all, his life affected the whole world. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so, so you know, we're, we're really, you know, the world has seen and, and understands a little bit about giving, but what they're missing is the greatest gift, which is Jesus. He's the greatest gift of all. Amen? Yes, amen. Praise God for Jesus. In Proverbs 11, 24 and 25, it says, There is one who scatters and increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right. But it leads to poverty. A generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also be watered himself. And this scripture is just so powerful because you think if you give it all away, you won't have anything left. But the Bible tells us that when we're givers, we're, what we're doing is we're planting seeds out there. If you want love in your life, then, then give love. So love. Amen? If you, if you want to see an increase in finances, then bless people. Be a sower. Go out and, and touch people's lives. If you see someone who's hurting... Go out there and give them love. Help them to, to, to sense the love of God. If there are people out there who don't know Jesus, well, you have the ability to share Christ with them. Total, it'll totally transform their lives. I know that's what happened with me. As a little 10-year-old, broken and hurting, and, and you know, we were invited to church, and, and you know, it's a long story. I'm not going get, to get into it all. But there was an opportunity to receive Christ. And I was the last one in my family to receive him. I, I was so determined as a little 10-year-old that if, if, it, if, if it didn't mean anything to me, I wasn't just going to go up there like everyone else. I, it, you know, Jesus was going to have to make an impact on my life. And when, when a preacher shared the good news, it just broke my little heart that was so callous from, from everything that I've been through. And you think, how could a 10-year-old go through a lot? Trust me, 10-year-olds can go through a lot. Um, but Jesus came into my heart that day and transformed my life forever. You know, it's, it's incredible. I never dreamed I would be so honored and privileged to pastor a church. So it's a blessing. And so, um, you know, as, as someone sows, that they're, they're a blessing. When, when you sow, you're affecting people's lives. People who have sown into this ministry have affected people's lives. People that we've seen healed, people that we've seen set free, people that we've seen grow and mature. Um, anytime you've sown into this ministry, you're, you're making an impact in, in other people's lives. So praise God for that. Uh, in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, Give, this is Jesus speaking, he says, you know, we believe Jesus, right? Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Jesus said, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, or with the same measure that you, you give, it will be measured back to you. So if, if I, because I've heard people say, you know, I don't have any friends. And, and they struggle in that area. And I, I always ask the question, have you reached out to anybody? Have you tried to be a friend to people? Because it takes, if, if you want to be, have friends, you have to show yourself friendly. You know? And so, so whatever you're lacking in your life, just begin to sow. Sow in that area. And, and all of a sudden, you'll begin to see an increase in your life. It's, it's an awesome thing. It, and, and like I said, giving is way more than finances. Giving is whatever you have. Give your heart to people. You know, love people. Give your time to your family. Don't wait until you know um, they're too old to enjoy that love. You know, spend time with your parents while you still have them. Amen. Buy them flowers now. Don't wait. To the funeral. Hello? We need to be givers. You know? I mean, you know, I think that people will enjoy flowers a lot more while they're around to smell them. Amen? Amen. We need to be givers. We need to be blessers. And, you know, giving, it's, it's, uh, is the expression or the aroma of love. That's what giving is. We, we know, um, no, I don't have this one up here, but in, in John 3.16 it says, For God so what? Love the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, so giving, he, he loved because, you know, He gave because He loved. Amen? Amen. In, in 1 John 3.16, isn't that interesting? I just talked to you about John 3.16. Now we're going to go to 1 John 3.16. It says, By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In other words, you know, talk can be kind of cheap. We, if you love people, you're going to give. You're going to invest in their lives. You're going to invest and be a part of them. There are so many broken families out there because either one or the, or the other parent just didn't invest in their children or the children didn't invest in their parents when they got older. And, uh, you know, we need to be loving, not just our, our children and our parents, but we need to be loving each other. The Bible says that the, the world will know that we are Christians by our love. Amen? Amen. The, Amen. That we have for one another. I know, um, we know, we know the story of Mary. And I'm not talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. I'm talking about... Mary who came and anointed Jesus. And, and we, we know the story of it. Um, in Luke chapter 7, it, it speaks about, and she actually anointed Jesus twice. This is the first time she anointed him. She, she came up to Jesus and she had an alabaster um, full of scented oil. And she, she, what she did was she poured it on Jesus' feet. And um, she, she, she was just loving Jesus. She, she, that was a gift that she had for Jesus. She was giving of herself. And when she did it, it the whole house just smelled like, you know, a real perfumey, beautiful aroma. See, that was a picture of her love. A picture of her love for Christ. When we give, that's what we're doing. We're, we're creating an aroma. And so we're talking about the, the aroma of Christmas, the giving, the, the love part. Amen? The love part. And so, so, you know, Jesus, he said that she loved him much. And it wasn't 
just because it was her heartfeltness. It was because she also reached out. And in Luke chapter 7, I'm just going to read um, from 44 through 47. It says, Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you, do you see this woman? I entered your house, and it says, You gave me no water for my feet. See, there, there, there was a love that Mary had that gave. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I entered in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Now, I believe that when she heard that, it, it something stuck in her mind. She's like, Okay, I've anointed his feet with oil, but he was talking about his head hasn't been anointed with oil. So the second time she actually goes to anoint him, she actually pours it. I mean, she's like, I'm going to, she, she's thinking of a way to, to be even a better giver. A better giver. I'm going to give even better to Jesus next time. So, so the next time she comes, she breaks the, the oil and she just pours it all over his head. I mean, he was, he was saturated from top to bottom. Hallelujah. Talk about beautiful scent. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Well, I know God's had to forgive me of, of a lot. Amen. And that makes me want to thank Him for so much of what He's done for me. And I would say that, you know, many of us have had issues where we've had to get forgiveness for too. Amen? We, we, we should see Jesus and what He did for us as a model for the way we love people. He loved me so much, I was destined for hell. And Jesus came and delivered me. He died for me when I was at my worst. And so when people are at their worst in our lives... We, we should be just loving them. Because I believe that that love will rub off on them. Amen? When, when your husband or your wife has gotten on your last nerve, that's not the time to blast them. That's the time to love them. Amen? First of all, it's a blessing. Second of all, it makes them feel really guilty. You know? <laughs> Just put that hot coals on their head, right? But, uh, you know, um, I mean, I guess you could say you kill them with kindness, right? But, but, you know, or you could say you heal them with kindness. That's another way of doing it, right? But, you know, this is the time of the year where we, we see so much giving everywhere. Giving and receiving. But we don't want to forget the, the whole attitude behind it. And it's all love. God loves a cheerful giver. Not a tearful giver. Not a fearful giver. Not a giver that is drudging. Not a grudging giver. Right? God loves a cheerful giver. He wants... Because it's more than the giving. It's the motive. It's the heart behind the giving. Amen? You know, have you ever walked into a room where there's just been an argument? And uh, you didn't know that there was an argument, but you walk in and all of a sudden the... the, the Atmosphere is just charged with just all, I mean, you're like, oh, I don't want to stick around here. It's like the words and the attitudes that were exchanged, they actually permeate the atmosphere. They actually affected the atmosphere. And, and here you are, you're in, a, you just walk into the room, and there's an argument, and you're like, whoa, you know, what did I just walk into? You know, and uh, you're, you're probably in a hurry to get out, you know. I need to go. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is with love also. Love can create and permeate an atmosphere. When you're given to people out of love, you can create, it's like an aroma. You, you, you're giving off to, to the world. You're, you're showing the world the love of God. And, and it creates, you know, and this is Christmas time. This is a time when, when we, um, a lot of times, we'll go into a house and there'll be baked goods. You know, I love that. Uh, where you walk in the house and it's just 
You can smell. It's, even, even Thanksgiving, you know, the pumpkin pies. Mm -hmm. I love pumpkin pie. But uh, it's one of my favorites. But, but you know, where, where the house, someone's just been baking all day, and it's just full of just great smells. It's really great. Or candles, you know, scented candles. Um, Norma's more of the candle person, right, honey? <laughs> plug-ins. Plug-ins. Oh, we got the plug-ins at my house, you know. But, uh, but, you know, it does create an atmosphere. And, uh, you know, that's the way it is with the love of God. The love of God creates that atmosphere. It's, it's a spirit of giving. Amen? Amen. In, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear, dear children, and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. See, Jesus gave his life, and it was a sweet-smelling aroma to God. When we give of ourselves to people, when we're a blessing to people, when, when our attitude is, you know what, I live to give. I just want to give. I want to help people. I want to bless them. To God, it is a beautiful aroma. It creates an atmosphere. Angels like to be around that kind of atmosphere, you know. And that's the kind of atmosphere that, that happened in, you know, during the birth of Christ. I mean, angels showed up. God gave a sweet-smelling aroma. God gave His best. God gave His Son into the world. And all the angels are all excited. It created that atmosphere, that atmosphere of love. And I just want to encourage you this Christmas season, don't just give, but give with the right heart. Give with, you know what, I just love you so much, I just want to bless you with something. Amen? That's, that's the kind of love that, that really will touch someone's heart. That's the kind of love that will transform their life. And um, the last scripture I want to share with you is in Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. This is where Paul is speaking, and he says, Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphrodites, Epaphrodites, the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. So, so when they gave, when they sowed, to God, it, he, he, he is a good, a good sniffer, you know that? And so when, when, but you know what his favorite scent is? Love. And, and so when we give, it, it creates an aroma of love. God loves that. And, and, you know, there's ladies here, and anyone here have your favorite perfume? Amen? And if you put too much of it on, when I give you a hug, I have your favorite perfume. Because it just gets on me, you know. Um, and so, you know, that's the thing. God wants us to have His love so much in our lives, just to have that, that spirit, that attitude of giving so much in our hearts, that when we come in contact with people, we rub off on them. We, we, we make a difference. They're changed. By, we, can, we can change people by our attitudes, by our love. The love of God. Amen? And we can create an atmosphere by walking in that love. Amen? So the aroma of Christmas is giving from a heart of love. That's what the aroma of Christmas is. It's a celebration of the greatest gift ever given. We know who that is, right? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. We need to live to give. And the last thing I want to say is Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas means happy. Amen? We're happy people, right? Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas to you. <clears throat> Amen? I just want to encourage you, and, you know, as we go through this week, this this we can celebrate the, the birth of Christ. That as we give these gifts and as we receive these gifts, we need to have, to have our hearts open and be receptive and just let it be about love. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person here today. I thank you, Lord, for Jesus, the greatest gift ever given. And Lord, I just thank you that 
as, as we allow the Holy Spirit to, to minister to us, and Lord, as we allow the, the love of God to flow out of our hearts, Lord, that we will just have that same attitude that you had. That, Lord, we just, we're givers. We give, and Lord, we give out of a heart of love. And Lord, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Help us, Lord, to make a difference in other people's lives this season. And we just give you the praise, all the honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. I want to just say Merry Christmas, and we love you.